The Tesla Powerwall 3 is so good I'm expecting all the other manufacturers to start copying it. And that's a great thing whether you choose Tesla for your home battery or not. Let me take you through all the latest details and explain why. Hi there, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel Gary Does Solar. In my last video where I announced the availability of the Powerwall 3 in the UK, I promised you a more in-depth analysis of the product, including all the latest announced features. This is that video. And even if you're not a Tesla fan, or you think their battery products are overpriced, it's worth watching because the Powerwall 3 is now the new benchmark for home battery systems. OK, let's get into it. If you haven't seen this video yet, I recommend you pause this one for a moment and start watching it first, as I'll be building on the information presented in that video. There's no doubt about it, whether you like Tesla or not, they make solid products. The Powerwall 2 was introduced into the market over 8 years ago, an eternity in the world of solar, and even today it remains the standard by which all other home batteries are measured. That's a testament to Tesla's engineers, they consistently get things right first time, and that's proven with over 600,000 units sold to date, with no notable in-life issues. And now Tesla has upped its own game, incorporating all of that insight from all those deployed units over all those years to bring you the Powerwall 3. Tesla described Powerwall 3 as designed by installers for installers. And you only need to watch this video from Spirit Energy in the UK to see why. Spirit Energy is a Tesla premium partner in the UK, and they've installed nearly 240 Powerwall 2s last year. It's not surprising then that Colby Hastings, the Director of Residential Energy at Tesla, flew over to speak to Spirit Energy and other installers about what features and capabilities they'd like to see in the Powerwall 3. Tesla is always listening to the market in order to develop the best product market fit for their own products. And all of this means that buying a product from Tesla is a low risk decision. Yeah, but what about the price? Don't worry, we'll come to that later. Let's first talk about capacity and power. As we know, the Powerwall 3 has a capacity of 13.5 kilowatt hours, which Tesla believes is more than enough for most residential properties across the world. And it has a power output of 11.5 kilowatts, which again will cover most residential requirements. And don't forget, the Powerwall 3 is able to provide a peak power of around 30 kilowatts for a short time, and that's enough to handle clothes dryers and AC units when they start up. If you need more capacity and power, then you can simply add two Powerwall 3s together to double the capacity to 27 kilowatt hours and also double the power to 23 kilowatts. You can actually stack up to four Powerwall 3s together on a single phase for a total capacity of 54 kilowatt hours and a power output of 46 kilowatts. But now, if you only need the extra capacity and not the extra power, there is a cheaper way using what Tesla called DC expansions. Instead of adding another Powerwall 3, you can add a DC expansion, which is the same as a Powerwall 3, but with some of the expensive electronics removed. This doubles the capacity to 27 kilowatt hours, but keeps the power output to 11.5 kilowatts. You can add up to three DC expansions to a Powerwall 3, like so, giving a total capacity of 54 kilowatt hours. And if you really want, you can stack up to four Powerwall 3s, each with three DC expansions, to give a whopping 216 kilowatt hour capacity and a total power output of 46 kilowatts. Wow! Now some of you will already have a Powerwall 2 home battery, and you'll want to know if you can add a Powerwall 3 to it. Right now you can't, but there is good news on the horizon. An update is planned for early next year, if not before, so that you can mix and match Powerwall 3s with 2s. Finally, I'd hoped by now that Tesla would have confirmed the battery chemistry was LFP, but to date Tesla hasn't made any public comment on that as far as I'm aware. That said, many installers, including Spirit Energy in the video mentioned earlier, are stating Powerwall 3 chemistry is indeed LFP, and so I'm now fairly confident it is. If Tesla just happens to be watching this video though, it would be great to have a categorical statement on this, given that many customers have a requirement for LFP chemistry. 
Okay, let's talk now about emergency power supply or EPS. The Tesla Powerwall 3 is able to power all your home appliances in the event of a power cut. And for this, it will need to be connected to one of the following devices. A Tesla Backup Gateway 2, which is able to do both partial and whole home backup. And this has been around for some time with the Powerwall 2. A Tesla Backup Gateway 3, which is a new, simplified and less expensive Gateway 2. Now the Gateway 3 only supports whole home backup, but this is the direction Tesla is going in and actually how most people want to use the product. And there is a third option for the Powerwall 3 in the form of a Tesla backup switch, which attaches directly to the meter design used in the USA and some other locations. The backup switch makes for an even cheaper and more straightforward install, and it was born out of Tesla's designed by installers for installers philosophy. Now, even if you don't require EPS operation, currently you still need to buy one of these devices for your Powerwall 3, but I have been informed Tesla is working on a software update allowing it to operate without any external hardware and therefore lowering the cost. Now, one comment that keeps cropping up is what's the point of having EPS if your Powerwall 3 will drain itself in just over an hour given the higher power output? I think these people are completely missing the point. Whenever there's a power cut, your Powerwall 3 will automatically and seamlessly take over the grid to power your home. You'll only know this has happened when you receive a message on your smartphone telling you about the power cut. And at that point, you can go around your home and turn off all the non-essential appliances, which will reduce your overall power requirement and therefore allow your home to be powered for far longer. Yeah, but what about the price? Okay, I hear you and we will be talking about that soon. We're ready now to talk about the built-in solar inverter. And this is one of the biggest differences between the Powerwall 3 and the Powerwall 2. Traditionally, a solar system comprises three main parts. One or more solar arrays to generate DC power from sunlight, an inverter to convert that DC power into AC so that it can be used by the home, and a home battery to store some of that energy for later use. With Powerwall 3, the inverter is now integrated with the battery in a single unit. And while a typical traditional inverter only supports two arrays, or strings as they're referred to, the Powerwall 3 supports up to three in countries like the UK. And in the USA and some other countries where roof designs are more complex, Powerwall 3 can support up to six separate arrays. It's also worth noting that arrays can be oversized by up to 170% as well. And if you're not familiar with what that means, I cover array oversizing in this video here. By having the solar inverter integrated into the Powerwall 3, it again makes for a quicker and easier installation. The unit is quicker to mount, wire and commission. There's no additional solar inverter to install, and it also reduces the risk of installer error. Again, Tesla's principle of designed by installers for installers in action. We're already seeing solar equipment prices falling over the last few years, including panels, inverters and batteries, but Tesla are looking to reduce the installation costs as well. The quicker and easier the installation, the less cost it is for the consumer. Even better, more and more electricians will become approved installers, which will also bring down costs for the consumer through healthy competition. By the way, if you're getting a lot from this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. This all helps get more reach for my videos so that more and more people can benefit. Thank you. So what if you want to use Powerwall 3 with an existing solar installation, or you wish to use microinverters instead of a string inverter? By default, the battery inside Powerwall 3 is in a DC coupled configuration, directly linked to the built-in solar inverter. But that inverter can be disabled, allowing Powerwall 3 to simply act as an AC coupled battery which is exactly how the Tesla Powerwall 2 battery operates. And the great thing about an AC coupled battery is that this can be added to any kind of solar installation, even those with microinverters. If you're not sure about the difference between DC and AC coupled battery operation, I cover this and more in this video here. A few additional features and capabilities then before we get to pricing. The first is active thermal management. Tesla recommends Powerwall 3 is installed in a garage or outside the property. And this raises the question of how it will perform in both very low and very high temperatures. 
Tesla has actually redesigned the thermal management system of the Powerwall 3 based on the technology used in their Tesla Model 3 electric vehicle. This means that the Powerwall 3 can easily operate in temperatures as low as minus 20 degrees Celsius, minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit, and as high as 50 degrees Celsius, 122 degrees Fahrenheit, which should be good enough for most parts of the world. Second is integration with energy providers. It's great to see Tesla working with energy providers directly so that Powerwall customers can now benefit from the many innovative smart tariffs out there. One example is Octopus Energy in the UK and an increasing number of other countries where you can now use Powerwall for their Intelligent Octopus Flux and Intelligent Octopus Go tariffs. By the way, if you live in the UK and you would like to switch to who I believe is by far the best energy provider there, please feel free to use my referral code and we'll both get £50. And that really helps the channel and also my mission to educate everyone about solar. And a huge thank you to all of you who've signed up using my code so far. Okay, so I promised that we'd talk about the pricing of Powerwall 3, so let's deal with that now. In the UK at the moment, the cost is £5,500 for the battery, but you also have to spend £800 on the gateway, which is mandatory for the moment, and then there's the installation costs on top of all that. There's no doubt about it, it's an expensive battery, especially compared to all the competition that's now out there. So here are my views on the pricing, and of course your views may well be very different. Whatever product you're buying, whether that be smartphones, sneakers or solar equipment, there are premium brands and also budget brands. I regard Tesla as a premium brand, and premium brands can and do, of course, command premium prices. Why is Tesla a premium brand? Well, the evidence is in their products. Their products are consistently well ahead in features and capabilities than the rest of the market. And perhaps even more important, their products just work. In the case of Powerwalls, once they're installed, they don't really need any further attention. They'll operate for years without any issues. And it's the same for Powerwalls EPS capability. It's all automatic, and again, it just works when you need it. And people are prepared to pay extra for that. Having said that though, there is plenty of choice in the home battery market today, and some manufacturers have great products at great prices. For example, I have a Give Energy battery system, which has worked flawlessly ever since it was installed more than a year ago. Now, it doesn't surprise me that the Powerwall 3, being a new product, will likely be priced higher initially in order to control demand. But over time, especially with Tesla's ambition to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, I can see prices coming down a lot, if for no other reason than economies of scale. Just look at this chart, which shows Tesla's energy storage stats over the last few years. This year, in just two quarters, they nearly surpassed everything they did in 2023. And that was already twice what they did in 2022. This is a company that is hell-bent on pushing the market forward. I know Elon Musk might not be everyone's cup of tea, but you can see he's deadly serious about sustainable living, and he's arguably got the best products to support that. Let me know what you think about Tesla's products and also the pricing of those products in the comments. And please let me know the pricing of equivalent home battery products that you're seeing as well, as this could help others who are looking for a cheaper solution. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you found it informative. Now you might not believe this, but I'm actually working on another nine videos at the moment, and I'll try my best to get them out to you as soon as I can. And a huge thank you to all my Patreon members who are making all of this possible. Cheers for now.